All right, this is a live look as we prepare for the launch of the latest SpaceX flight. This is Crew 11, and it's going to take astronauts into orbit. There's some cloud cover, and that could delay things, possibly lightning as well. So we could see the launch scrubbed again. We'll get back to it just as they're about to go up. But joining us now to talk more about it is our CTV science and technology expert, Dan Riskin. And uh, Dan, do you ever get bored of watching these? No, I, I love them. And, and I'll tell you, with the uncertainty in politics and NASA's funding and all the other stuff, I take nothing for granted. I don't know what the future looks like. And so every rocket launch uh, is worth just soaking it in. There may be lots more of these. There may be a gap for a few years. We don't know. And so, uh, you know, all that instability makes this all the more interesting. But uh, right now it's coming down to physics. It's not politics. It's <laughs> physics. And uh, it ain't brain surgery, but it is rocket science. So it's it's fun to watch and see all these smart people do what they're so good at. Now, they had to scrub yesterday because of weather, uh, and they might be close again to just looking at some of those clouds there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that camera angle doesn't seconds. do us any favors. Uh, but we're looking, yeah, we're looking at the clouds in the background there. We'll see what, uh, were there one minute from launch? That's where the cutoff happened yesterday. Yesterday it was one minute to launch, and they said, you know what, those clouds aren't where we want them. And so they pulled the they pulled the shoot, so to speak, and said we'll delay it tomorrow. And now here we are, one minute from potentially an actual launch. We're down to about 45 seconds. Sorry, my earpiece popped out there as we were watching this. I got so excited. Uh, what will they be doing on this uh, on this flight? Well, I mean, the, the big thing is to go to the International Space Station. You've got two Americans, uh, a Japanese uh, JAXA astronaut and a, uh, a Russian um, cosmonaut. And uh, they, they should be a six to eight month mission on the International Space Station. What I think is most interesting is that the, the leader here, Zena Cardman, she was supposed to go up. Uh, on Crew 9. This is Crew right. 11. She was we're, supposed to go up on Crew 9, but she we're got We're going to stop you there, Dan. I think we got about 12 seconds. So who, we all love a countdown, right? T -minus yeah, go 10, for the countdown. I'll tell you. 9, after. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mission. Mission's full power and lift off. Go Thomas. Go NASA. Go through 11. Together we rise as NASA SpaceX Crew 11 heads up to the International Come Space Station. Vehicles oh. pitching down range. 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Propulsion is nominal. Propulsion they are Falcon amazing to watch, aren't they? As the vehicle pitching oh, down range. This is so good. And I love this stuff. I mean, coast. it just is just join expedition glorious. Uh, it really is. And so this so thing's going to push up for eight minutes, stage uh, or for a few minutes. And then eight minutes from launch is when the booster is supposed to come back and, and make contact landing again. So, you know, you'll remember that these SpaceX spaceships, they have the ability to reland the, the part that's pushing that capsule up into the air so watch for that separation and then watch for that uh that that booster to come back and land back down on earth that's i think the coolest thing about these launches and just the ability to like look we're, we're on the side of the rocket watching it right yeah. now i mean it's incredible Absolutely. technology it really is and, and listen just to finish what i was saying uh yeah. zana cardman the the leader of this mission she was supposed to go up for crew nine she got bumped because of that starlink uh, or sorry the uh the uh the, 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 the problem they had with the spacecraft when uh, it didn't work and they had to leave those two astronauts up in space mm -hmm. for a long time, uh, she ended up having to wait one trip out while they sent the spaceship up to go pick those other two up. So this is finally that story coming to completion. I am sure, I'm sure she didn't mind waiting knowing she was going to go up, right? Yeah, exactly. And Starliner is the word I was looking for. So anyway, she, that, that sort of story is put to bed for now. And she's on this uh, launch going up. And so she's experiencing all these Gs right now. And it's just, it's amazing what these spacecraft can do. It, it does make the politics sort of fall to the side. And lets you just sort of imagine this moment where you say, look where humanity's at. We're launching into space. It's just a glorious thing. And I mean, it hasn't changed. I know the technology has changed, but has the concept changed all that much on how they're launched from 50 years ago? Well, we, we, yeah, it's back to the future. It used to be that we did it this way, where there was a big, huge stick with a bunch of fire in it, and it pushed a little capsule up there, and that was Apollo, and that was all these other missions. And then we got onto these space shuttles that looked very different, but uh, we realized there was something brilliant about that original plan. And so now we're doing, we're, we're doing exactly that, where there's that pencil-shaped thing that's pushing the little booster up into the sky. Um, but the big change now is that those boosters can come back and, and land and be reused. And the capsules are reused too. This capsule is on its sixth mission, which is the most of any uh, Dragon crew capsule. So really amazing stuff. And, and look at that separation. Just, I love it. <laughs> it's so good. And it's live. Oh, it's no, it's great. animation. 
This is better than Marvel. It's amazing. And it still looks, though, when you look at the aluminum, I'm not sure what that wrapping is, but it looks like they've just stuck aluminum foil on there. Nothing has changed on that. <laughs> it does. It does. I mean, it, listen, it works. It's light. And uh, the, the physics that go into this, you just got to pick the right variables and the right materials. And some of it has to be extremely strong and some of it can be very lightweight. And I'm trying to see what's, are some of the, what are some of the numbers on this thing? Is that their altitude? hundred and Are they at 100 miles already? Is that possible? Yeah, I, I'm looking there. Altitude is in kilometers. So 100 kilometers 100 up, kilometers. and their speed is in uh, kilometers an hour. So uh, I, it's, I mean, these numbers are, you just sort of almost can't wrap your head around them. But it's, it, 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 it gets to its maximum sort of uh, pressure pretty early in the launch. And we're past that, and we're getting up into an area now. 100 kilometers is considered the edge of space by a lot of definitions. And so they've succeeded in sending this thing up. But, of course, the really interesting thing on your left side of the screen there is seeing that booster as it makes its way back down. Uh, firing its little thrusters so that mm -hmm. as it comes down, it can land and be reused, which is something that was would have been a total dream back in the 80s when the space race was in its infancy. And it's one of the things you don't think about. It's actually continued to rise up the uh, the uh, booster before it heads back down. Yeah. Like it's still at 128 kilometers and, and the rocket is up at 160 now. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And so it's got to come back down. It's got to maintain control. You can see that it's got its its uh, little landing pad sort of pieces out to the side. And you can see those flashing little bits. This is all, of course, totally computer controlled. There's no human who's going to be able to do this with a joystick, uh, despite the best of their abilities. And it took them a long time to get this figured out. I mean, SpaceX famously had lots of explosions on the on the launch pad and on the, the landing pad as they tried to pull this off, uh, re-landing these boosters. And people have pointed out that that's just a, a way of proceeding through the, the discovery of these technologies that now NASA can't do. NASA just doesn't have the freedom to have a whole bunch of explosions on the launch pad. And SpaceX was almost reckless. They said, well, there's no humans there. So if it explodes, big deal. Let's try, let's try, let's try. And they were able to move much faster as a result. And so that's one of the great triumphs of the privatization of spaceflight. But, you know, there's a flip side to that coin. The, the drawback to the privatization of, of spaceflight has been the fact that we now have one billionaire whose whims mm -hmm. control a lot of how progress goes in space and that's not really what anybody intended we hoped to have multiple companies vying for contracts so that nasa would still be able to be the ultimate decider but uh right now with these launches and also with starlink satellite technology uh it really comes down to very powerful billion one powerful billionaire who, who controls everything and that's elon musk officers here and at SpaceX. what are they looking at when they're watching we're looking at these cameras i'm sure they're seeing more cameras what are some of the things they're looking at through all this well they've got a they've got models and they've got previous launches that tell them exactly sort of what the numbers are supposed to look like at any given time and they know down to the second when things are going to occur for example we know that that uh that booster that we're watching come back down to earth uh it's going to land just about eight minutes after launch and they know very precisely we're about five minutes into the launch now so it should be about three minutes before that landing happens and you can see on the left side of your screen that it's approaching you can see the space coast of florida mm -hmm. and the thing that strikes me looking at this is just florida is basically heaven i mean it's it's tropical it's warm you can walk around in a t-shirt you can breathe the fresh air there's birds flying around and that's the launch pad that takes humans into the least hospitable place you could go, which is space, where there isn't even air to breathe, and you need all the technology we have to keep yourself safe. And so that juxtaposition, I think, is is really something, and it's it's uh, it's really striking to see. I love sharing this with you, but I, I got to cut you off. We're almost out of time. We have to go to break. But Dan, thanks as always for joining us, CTV science and technology expert Dan Riskin. Thanks. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It feels like Christmas, doesn't it? Thanks. Cheers, Dan.